Greetings, it's uh, Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Yeah, thanks all for joining me here and the comments that you make and the likes and the shares and the subscribing and all that. It's helping to make this uh, little channel go. I'm going to talk today about police officers in prison. The numbers that I've experienced all had a very difficult, a very difficult time of it. I mean, it's bad enough being a prison officer in prison. I mean, sentenced to imprisonment as a prison officer. That's as bad. But uh, the the real bogey is the one that they do hate. The, the inmates, they hate the police. And this guy that's going in now, David Carrick, I'm afraid he's going to ex experience some serious difficulties. Uh, because basically what he's done is he's doubled it up here hasn't he as I mentioned yesterday he's uh, <clears throat> he's got a line of lemons uh, it's not exactly it's the opposite of the of the full full jackpot <laughs> yeah but the problem he's got is that uh, they all they all not only do they know his name they know exactly what he looks like. So a lot of police officers who get sentenced to imprisonment uh, deny that they've been police officers and they go in surreptitiously. Very often they get located into open prison. And open prison is a completely different thing because the inmates that are in there definitely do not want to be returned to closed conditions. Uh, there's a prison that uh, I was at when I was in training uh, that was at um, Lay Hill prison at uh, near Bristol and uh, that was an absolute doddle it was like a, a, a farm you know where they, where they looked after pigs and all sorts of stuff did market gardening and all that and worked out some of them worked out in the local community because it was an agricultural community around there near Chipping Sodbury. Have a look on your Google Maps at Chipping Sodbury. Layhill Prison's quite near to there. It was a very nice rural area. And in the middle of it, the open prison known as Layhill. But I don't think they had any problems with it. I believe that uh, Rolf Harris was there and uh, Max Clifford. Basically, uh, that's the kind of establishment, home office establishment that police officers would normally go to but they can't send uh, David Carrick to a prison like that because he's serving lifetimes 36 considered to be an exceedingly dangerous inmate so the alternatives for this ex-police officer will include uh, rule 43 by application which is segregation from normal location by specific request of the inmate who wants to be protected from potential assault which is going to be demeaning for this uh, guy because he's obviously you've seen images of him when he was being arrested he's quite a big arrogant pig of a man and uh, he is going to have to face up to the fact that his uh, his cellmates and his fellow fellow inmates are all going to be sex offenders and perverts and because they have to be protected as well because believe it or not in prison certain prisoners consider them to be a target you know they get things thrown at them like boiling water We've previously mentioned on this channel about uh, how inmates are ab abused by other inmates. But they put things like they have uh, socks and they put into them billiard balls. You know the billiard balls that they play or pool, yeah, pool table. Put them into a sock or maybe a PP9 battery. That used to be a a favourite at, at Wormwood Scrubs, the PP9 battery in the sock. And they swung it round like a club and bashed somebody over the head with that. Of course, you get the sharp edge of the PP9 battery catching you on the head. It's going to seriously, potentially seriously damage you. 
that kind of weapon is used and also of course the homemade shank which is usually uh, a toothbrush with a razor blade melted into it you know so it and usually they put two quite close together so that they open a, a very jagged wound a double-edged wound that's very difficult to stitch so you're definitely going to end up with some serious scarring in that in that uh, respect but uh, if the staff are doing their duties uh, at the prison I believe you'll probably go to somewhere like Full Sutton but he may go somewhere else of course but he has to go to a specialist uh, rule 43 institution because otherwise he is going to get seriously hurt uh, when I was at the scrubs we had uh, ex-commander Drury who was in the segregation unit at, uh, at the scrubs that's as you look at the scrubs to get the Twin Towers there with uh, Elizabeth Fry and John Howard, the prison reformers set in uh, relief on the on the towers. Look at the scrubs, that's the main gate there. Directly in front of you you'll see B-Wing, C-Wing and far on the left is A-Wing and it was right at the end of A-Wing that the uh, segregation unit was and it was a really strong unit and at the back of that it had a cage which was used for exercise you know it's a proper like a lion's cage you know where you'd have lions walking around yeah except you've got the likes of Ian Brady and uh, of course as I mentioned uh, Kenneth Drury the uh, commander Drury of Scotland Yard who was uh, imprisoned for corruption he was associating himself with uh, the Soho gangster known as uh, Bernie Silver and I uh, previously mentioned that I met Bernie Silver when I was there he was he had uh, sy sy syphilitic dementia Bernie, Bernie Silver syphilitic dementia uh, and one night in the hospital there I inadvertently sat on the stool and went to sleep and I woke up about two in the morning with Bernie Silver sat on my knee trying to Give me a French kiss. Kiss me, kiss me. I don't know what it is about me. I had the bloody... What was it? The other one? Uh, yeah, the Cambridge Rapist. He tried the same nonsense as well. I mean, I'm hardly Cleopatra, am I? Eh? I'm not Rudolph Valentino or anything like that. So if these bastards are trying to kiss me, they've got to be insane. Anyway... That's the kind of thing. So what's going to happen to David Carrick now? I feel he's in a dead difficult thing. He'll have a, a period of time to actually ac accustom himself to the idea that he's no longer a police officer. He is, in fact, an inmate, and that he's an inmate that's under great risk from his fellow prisoners who will believe this. They will want to injure him. So you can imagine spending the next 30 years looking over your shoulder and... I have to say that inevitably it will come. It don't matter how big you are, I've seen them. I saw one guy at Strange Ways, great big fellow, was throwing his weight around, trying to extort tobacco and all the stuff off other inmates. He was about, he was probably about 6'3", something like that, big muscular, but big black guy. Uh, I only saw him when they brought him into the hospital. He needed about 150 stitches what they'd done, about half a dozen of them held him down, got a razor blade and slashed him all over his body. He was a mess. It took me and another hospital officer about an afternoon to stitch him up. I'm no expert at sewing, believe me. <laughs> he's, he's obviously still got my trademark on him. Eh? Great big, great big loops. <laughs> I'll do, yeah. Anyway, so that's what's going to happen to David Carrick, for those of you who have wondered. And now, I'm going to read you a poem. I'll read you Grandpa Grumps later this week, but I'm going to read you a poem that I wrote. It's from my book, by the way. Not HMP Manchester Prison Officer, which is about the prisons. This is a book of poetry. They are Flowers and Collected Poems by John G. Sutton. Flowers and Collected Poems. And this is a poem 
That's that's a warning. That's so Larry can get his wellies on and beat a hasty retreat. Or, or, or Paula can get the porridge out. Yep. We're having some porridge to celebrate today, Paula. Or Bob the Bob, Bob, Bob. I don't know what Bob the Bob, Bob's into. I've got a good idea, but I don't know. Anyway, this is called Are We Bothering? It's in the Lancashire vernacular. Not completely, but to a certain extent in the Lancashire vernacular. I use a term called gradely, which means extremely good. But it's used mainly in Lancashire, sometimes in Yorkshire as well. Uh, and this is a poem about uh, being married and not having conjugal rights are you with me for all those who, who don't know what that is it means getting your leg over all right it's called are we bothering and it's written by your friend and mine john g sutton that's me by the way are we bothering i've been wedded over 40 years to the same woman my wife she calls me not fit to burn but still is in me life. She cooks me grub and washes clothes. She makes our home reek greatly. But when it comes to making love, her answer's all a sigh, maybe. These days, I get no leg over. She doesn't want to know. Her looks at me as if I'm daft when I reaches out me paw. And I asked her, are we bothering? Answer's all us, no. I'm getting reek frustrated living like a monk and she sits and knits away so I goes and gets reet drunk but to the night I get a freight I just get home from pub it pulls me out flat at off and me back she starts to rub by gum that looks a proper mon she whispers in me ear I'm thinking hey, hold on a bit um fairly full of beer but missus was unstoppable she soon had me upstairs ripped off me corduroy undies and never said a prayer that were the best scene to i've had in nigh on twenty year and what was it that stirred her up to make her love and want me instead of sitting knitting, knitting socks she'd been watching full monty now every night i'm down the pub on blue movies she's wallowing her knit one pearl two's been forgot and her cry is are we bothering there you go folks are we bothering by john g sutton leave me some comments insults i don't care anything just acknowledge that it's here because I'm trying my best with this to make it amusing, so I hope you're all enjoying it. And don't forget to read my book and leave a nice comment on Amazon. That helps. Bye, folks.